Fantasy Edge with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fantasy Edge. My name is Jonathan Chan alongside Kevin Huo. Uh, Richard Seville will be out one more week, but he'll be back for next week uh, for the Week 7 review uh, next next Tuesday. So uh, let's get started with the uh, the news as always. Uh, and Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing good. My fantasy teams are doing good. My Baltimore Ravens are doing decent. So yeah, I can't really complain. I'm glad you didn't say anything more than decent after a Bengals game. Yeah, where we didn't cover the spread. We we somehow had like 500 yards, 200 yards, and didn't even cover the spread. We're not that good. You, you can just blame that, that kickoff return. You're fine. I could, but, you know, you, you got to come out and stomp the sad. You can't just, you can't <laughs> win by seven. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's get on to the news here. A couple of uh, coaches on the hot seat. Dan Quinn in Atlanta, uh, the one in five Falcons are playing uh, really bad. And Jason Garrett, the three and three Cowboys, started off hot against some bad teams. Now they... Uh, Lost to the Jets. Which uh, coach's seat is hotter right now, and who is the first to lose their job? Um, by default, I think this is Dan Quinn, uh, just because Jerry Jones just refuses to fire Jason Garrett. Um, I mean, how long have we been calling Jason Garrett's job? I, I think it's been at least four years, probably longer than that. So, uh, I mean, they're not going to fire him to three and he lost the Jets. Dan Quinn, though, I mean, they're one in five. They can't do anything right. They missed a PAT to lose that game, I believe. Um, I think Dan Quinn is is a pretty, pretty solid candidate for next coach fire. Yeah, I mean, he's supposed to be a defensive coach, right? And the Falcons are just awful. I think uh, PFF just covering receivers the 31st. Uh, they're just bad. They're not good anywhere. At least Matt Ryan's uh, getting some nice garbage time points, though. Oh, yeah. The Matt Ryan, the Matt Ryan special. He's putting up those MVP numbers, uh, not getting many Ws. That's for sure. Um, I guess sticking with Jason Garrett and the Cowboys, Amari Cooper is reportedly in terrible pain uh, with a quad injury, I believe. Delpha for Week 7. How does Dak kind of bounce back without his top target? Is it going to be a lot of Zeke dump-offs, a lot of, a lot of Michael Gallup? What are we seeing here for Week 7? Um, yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of Michael Gallup, but I think the uh, the problem is the combination of Cooper going down and both starting tackling down. Um, Dak, the kind of guy who needs a little bit of talent around him to see it, so that's very concerning. On the other hand, they have the Giants, or actually, they have the Eagles next week, then the Giants look after that. Eagles secondary is god off. The Giants, not much better. So um, he could still put up some numbers even without Cooper, but I mean, I think his ceiling is severely capped without so much talent around him. Yeah, I mean, it's not an not, not ideal situation, but like I said, he without Cooper that the ceiling's not there and is it time for players to kind of or for fantasy owners to maybe sell high a little on Dak if if still possible yeah, I mean, I, I definitely would. I feel like if you have Dak, you probably also have another option at quarterback because I don't think anyone really drafting him as their quarterback one. So um, I would, yeah, try to package him, try to move him. On the other hand, if you're, if you're buying a quarterback, don't overpay for Dak because, you know, he's just a quarterback. You can stream quarterbacks and you'll be just as successful. All right. And speaking of other uh, just quarterbacks, Baker Mayfield once again uh, struggled with his passing through another bunch, I think three interceptions this week against the Seahawks. Now it leads the NFL with 11 interceptions not completely surprising considering that he had the worst um I guess interception ratio even last year in his rookie year when he was so highly touted is this something that's freddie kitchen's issue or is it um baker and the o-line anything you saw in this game um if you did see it that point to what's wrong with the browns right now um that's a good stat i didn't know he led the league last year in the interception rate but um yeah obviously it's a little bit of baker trying to do much and i would also say that it um a lot of bit of freddie kitch is not really putting him in position to succeed um last year uh baker i mean baker even going back to oklahoma and the draft process he's known as a quarterback who's like a first read quarterback he processes his first read real quick and then he can hit it but you know, don't ask him to do too much in this slow developing stuff, especially in the first year in this offense with a shoddy offense line. Um, it's kind of just a recipe for disaster. So I blame Freddie Kitchen for really, you know, not really dialing the right types of plays that's leading to Mayfield trying to force the issue. Probably doesn't help that Mayfield's like, he's, you know, he's a cocky dude. He's hearing all the, all the high, all the talk about, oh, he sucks. He's trying to prove everybody wrong and try to make too many plays. And at this point in his career, he's just not that good. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of both, but honestly, uh, it's not a good situation overall. And of course, for fans, fantasy purposes at this point baker mayfield is droppable right yeah i think you could have dropped him like two weeks ago but if you haven't figured out by now he's very droppable yeah he's better just as everybody that took him in the top five just want to make sure that they don't hold on for that sun cost um he's he's cuttable um yeah. sorry 
Nope, just wanted to agree. I want everyone to hear it three times from my mouth. Feel free to drop Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Uh, last piece of news before we move on to the game summaries. Uh, Panthers saying that they might stick with Kyle Allen, um, even when Cam gets back after the bye. Do you think they will, or do you think they're gonna go back to go back to Cam after what they saw through weeks one and two? I mean, I don't think they. W- I think you know, if if um, if Cam's healthy, then you know he's a, he's a former MVP. You can't move on from him without at least giving him another shot. I mean, yeah, I get it, Kyle. Well, we're talking about Cam Newton. He's MV- again former MVP. Uh, you got to give him another shot. I can. I hear there's like trade talk. Of, you know, ten teams interested in Cam if he was to be available. But ultimately, I think Cam has gives you a higher ceiling win. So I'd be pretty surprised if they moved on. You know, unless he comes back in his butt. Who knows about that? Yeah, I tend to agree with you there. I don't think that the Panthers can just say, "Hey, our like you said, former MVP and you know franchise QB comes back. We're gonna stick with Kyle Allen, who has you know as you said, he's been playing well, but he's not. I don't think he's winning them games. I feel like he's just not not losing them. Not that yeah, it matters yeah, at the end of the day, he's, but he's Alex Smithing them games. I mean, they won yeah. a game where James Winston threw five interceptions. Like, congratulations! Like, chalk this one up to a team win. A lot of them, I feel like, our team wins. The Panthers are a team that I was high on going because I thought the rest of the team was. So it doesn't surprise me that Allen, especially because I mean, CMC, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, all weapons. Uh, that offensive line, probably a top ten offensive line in the league. The defense is good. So if you just judge him straight based off of wins and losses, I mean, that's one thing. But I don't think he's really been put in a situation where he needs to you know like two minute drive win the game so um yeah i'd I'd still take cam he still hasn't thrown an interception though so credit to him yeah congratulations (laughs) all right uh moving on to our game summaries we'll start with the thursday nighter Uh, a couple things to go over here with the patriots and giants pats 135 14 um sony michelle again had a decent game a good number of rushes um golden tate six catches 102 yards with a big 60 yarder uh to be the first passing touchdown against the pats defense this year anything in particular other than the the big elephant in the room that we will talk about um not i mean not too much i mean the pay this game went exactly like we thought it would you know, patriots went out stomped did whatever they wanted to do. um when burkett is out michelle plays well two catches you know, let's give it up for sonny michelle um, and a drop pass catch he, 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 he dropped one it was a bad drop dropped the other one yeah it was a bad mind. drop he's a, he's a bum never mind <laughs> um you know edelman continues to do edelman thing can we can i can i ask you what should i be picking up ben watson scott fishbowl or because he's back on the team again is watson got cut yeah, he got Watson got, got cut. cut. I don't think he did got it, it, it. up today. They brought him out. Oh, did he? M- missed yeah. Oh, you call yourself a oh, fan. Sorry. I, I've been watching wrestling for like the last four hours, man. Yeah, Just sorry. cut me some slack. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, it's yeah. all right. All right. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't honestly. I don't think there's. I don't think there's enough. Like I, I, he'll get like. I feel he'll catch the odd touchdown, but the mm-hmm. consistency is not going to be there for to be like. Yeah. Let me start Ben Watson every week. Yeah. I guess that's fair. I mean, uh, I don't have much to think Juan would be back next week, and and we'll see what goes there. Uh, Tate had the long touchdown down kind of fluky uh, in my eyes it's kind of but um yeah not much to say about the giant well, let's get in um, let me moment aside all right you know. all right all right so uh in the thursday night game josh gordon went down uh hurt his knee looked like it uh hyper extended <sighs> pretty badly he ended up on ended up on the bike to end the game so he was moving he was walking around Pats haven't really released anything about what the injury was and as always he's listed as questionable for week seven man that hurt to, that hurt to watch um and he wasn't exactly having a good game before that either so Obviously, you're still starting him uh, as a wide receiver one overall, but still, you know. Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, let's just be honest. I'm surprised, like, a multi-week injury. It looked t- terrible. Like, yeah. It did not look like it. Um, but, yeah, I think it's time we had a discussion, Jonathan. Gordon has not been playing well. We're getting nope. Akeel Harry back. Jacoby Myers is a bull. And is it time that we think about Gordon as uh, not the centerpiece of this offense? Yeah, I mean, even at the start, I didn't. It pat past the the hype train stuff. I didn't think he was gonna be the centerpiece. Mm-hmm. The Pats. I, I thought maybe he would function as kind of the obviously the deep threat, but Brady's not really going deep all that often. Uh, his quality of targets, like he's he was getting seven eight targets a game, but a lot of them were just you know flings downfield, so Brady didn't get sacked. Uh, the quality of targets isn't really there. And he himself isn't really creating a ton of separation on his routes. So I I wouldn't say droppable just yet because the pass is still a good offense. Um, unless you have like a, a good, like solid, consistent option on the waivers sitting there. But if he's if it's not a major injury, I'd still hold just to see how it shakes out when and Keel Harry gets back. Yeah. I mean, is it just me? Or I mean the weird thing is like it feels like a guy like Josh, if he's healthy, is is exactly what this Patriots offense needs. Like it seems like they really need you know, an intermediate to deep field threat because they're not really, they don't really have any playmakers on the outside. I mean, nothing dynamic at least. So it's strange to me that it's not working out, to be honest. A lot of it could be the Patriots.
Patriots offensive line is just not good. Um, mm. with, there's a few injuries like Marshall Newhouse is not a good lineman. Uh, the tight ends Izzo and Lacoste aren't, aren't good blockers for the most part. Lacoste is decent, but yeah, um, the line is, isn't really giving Brady a lot of time to develop those, you know, intermediate and deeper plays. But even then, it's surprising that they're not seeing Gordon more on like slant routes and like quick. Quick, quick across the middle, like he scored that his touchdown the first game. Yeah, uh, yeah, more stuff like that I think would help, but they're just not going to that. It's, but it's like the same thing with the Browns and Odell. It's just like, yeah. you, why don't you use this guy more? Like whenever he yeah. does something, it's like, yeah, holy, that guy's amazing. Yeah, but I guess it there's no reason to throw to to Flash when Edelman has 15 yards of separation on everybody yeah, he's ever run around right. on. So, yes. but actually, let's I think we should further the conversation. Let's let's keep it real. Um, Jacoby Brissett, Jimmy Garoppolo combined eight as a starter. I think we can safely say Tom Brady is a sim quarterback. <laughs> Damn it, I knew this was coming. All right, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, next game. The London game, Panthers and Bucks. Uh, the Bucks defense shut down Christian McCaffrey yardage-wise. He's got, still got his points with a couple touchdowns, but impressive showing from the D-line. 22 rushes and 31 yards for McCaffrey. Yeah, um, the Bucks defense rush, rush attempts-wise is, is legit. Um, I mean, they add in the Domkins too, so I think that's a huge part of it, but Overall, on this, they've allowed the third fewest points to the running backs. And, you know, they faced a lot of good running backs. They faced uh, the, the, the Niners gang in, in week one, Christian McCaffrey week two, Saquon week three, Todd Gurley week four, Kamara week five, Christian McCaffrey again week six. And so to be after all, you know, those six teams to be third in points allowed is really, really impressive. Uh, unfortunately, their quarterback doesn't win games. I mean, they were down long before Jameis started throwing all those interceptions. But yeah, it's the, it's not helpful when he's got a one to five touchdown interception ratio at all. Helps Chris Godwin though. Oh, absolutely, Godwin, the first what? Tampa Bay wide receiver ever to uh, uh, cat, uh, catch for 125 yards in a straight game. So Godwin is beast. Yeah, and I think Jameis has a near perfect passer rating when passing to Godwin, and not a good passer to pass to Evans. So I don't know how that works. I don't know why that would be. Maybe he just yeah. he chooses to force to Evans while Godwin works more underneath. But hey, he's I not mean, going to stop passing him like Evan. It's starting to kind of be like that the Antonio Brown and the Schuster thing in in Pittsburgh. Where like I'm not saying Godwin's better than, and I'm not saying that he's better than Antonio Brown was. But fantasy wise, they're they're closer to one A and one B than, than most people would say. Oh yeah. Now all we need is for Evans to start complaining about his helmet, go crazy, and get traded to the Patriots. I'll kill you. <laughs> I'll be I'll be disgusted. I'll be legitimately disgusted. But it's gonna happen in the exact same way though. Whatever agent, uh, um, I guess, created that Brown thing, he's going to do the exact same thing for Evans, just reuse the script. I mean, why would you want to when you're playing with Jameis Winston? 400 yards passing. Let's ignore the five interceptions. 400 yards passing. Yeah, for real, though. It works. Um, another thing, I guess, in this one, OJ Howard still stinks, uh, and Cameron Brake got a touchdown. Uh, uh, is there a swap worth it for... Uh... For owners who need tight end, is Cameron Brait worth after the buy, or are we sticking with the good old OJ Howard? We'll get his targets. Don't worry, guys. Oh no, no, no! I thought we talked about this last week. Worry about OJ Howard, but also they are Cameron Brait. Like it's it's both ways. Jameis has Godwin and Evans, and and it doesn't even matter who else is out there. Really. Like they're just gonna you're not gonna get consistency from any of you guys. So hopefully you're gonna get Herndon or you you picked up Hunter Henry or something like that because OJ Howard is done. Yeah, good baseball player though. Nice catch. Oh, uh, the jokes. About, um, like oh OJ Howard caught that ball. He's never caught anything on my fantasy team. They're so mean, but so true. Can't catch anything without targets. So I'm a little distracted. I'm watching a matchup in my in one of my other leagues right now. The projected finish is 77.8 to 77.8. This is incredible. Oh, I'm in for it. Ties in fantasy football it's, are hilarious. Because it's like, what are the chances? It's Rodgers versus at Danny Amendola right now. Danny Amendola. <laughs> well, um, this might end up being a tie because they might just be trying to kill the clock, get a field goal. Yeah. Well, oh, this would be so funny. Uh, okay, on to the next game. I, not much to say about this one. We talked about it with your uh, already guess the Bengals and Ravens. Bengals are terrible. Um, Joe Mixon stinks. The whole the whole team's terrible, except for Auden Tate, who could be pretty useful coming up. But 12 targets, five catches, 91 yards. He did the best he could with, you know, Andy Dalton throwing it deep to him every play. Uh, he produced, dude, dude, but Auden Tate had five catches. And all of them were like, "I got to go up and get this" because Andy Dolan yeah. did not put it on the numbers at all. Yeah, hey, but twelve like, targets, incredible yeah. catches. Yeah. <laughs> if he's gonna keep throwing twelve targets to him, then you have to add Auden Tate at some point. Yeah, I mean AJ Green coming back. I wonder how that's gonna help or hurt. Um, oh, it, it, it Green... kills him. But as long as Green is still yeah. out, then yeah, AJ Green might get traded. So who knows? I, I'm not. I mean, come on, I'm not really trying to buy into the Bengals' offense. I don't have to. No, I mean you. 
can buy into the receivers, they have to throw. At this point, I, I'm de- I'm debating just straight dropping Mixon. Like I I straight up hate this dude for fantasy. Like I just want to drop you, him. I think you could get something for him. Like you might be able to get like uh, Auden uh, Tate, Mark Te- Mark Walton, maybe. Yeah. Oh Lord, <laughs> former Bengal Mark Walton. The dude okay. the, the dude that was supposed to take Gio's job the first time. What a, he's good though in Miami. He's better. He than looked good. Kalen and Bell, I guess moving to the the happy side of the ball here. Uh, Lamar Jackson. Why did he rush nineteen times? Was there a reason that he needed to run 19 times on the Bengals or did he just feel like flexing? Um, I think we just felt like flexing. I felt like, I think like, I think with Hollywood Brown out, like the, the passing tree is actually very limited. Like you're looking at Mark Andrews and then it's like Willie Sneed, Seth Roberts, Miles Boykin. Like, yeah, just run the ball. Um, and I mean, 19 yards for 152 yards. It doesn't have, you can't really argue with that, right? So uh, clearly it worked. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's just what you're going to get from Lamar as a fantasy quarterback, the savage. And of course, Ingram kept it going, scored another touchdown. One of the best running back values uh, of the year. Honestly, he's been yeah. very, very good. I don't know why people more more people didn't see it coming. I didn't. I very, discounted him. Very touchdown dependent. I he is a sneaky sell high candidate for me. I, I think um, you know there there's a chance Gus Edwards and Justice Hill start a little bit more of the workload as and start taking some of the touchdowns. I mean, Ingram, if you just look at his number, it's all touchdowns. Yeah. It's not a bad. Thing. No, but. It's all good. Um, all right, Seahawks, Browns. Browns are doing so well in this game. Um, they lost 32-28. They were doing so well until Baker started throwing interceptions again. <laughs> and then it all went to hell. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're up 20-6 to six at home. And then, yep. um, yeah, like you said, Baker just decided, oh, we're up 20-6. to six. Now it's time for me to take over and do my yeah. thing. Apparently his thing this year is throwing interceptions. So meanwhile, really, Nick Chubb really is bad. Yeah, I mean, meanwhile, Nick Chubb is out here with 122 yards and two touchdowns. And, you know, you don't try to run the clock up 14. Yeah, by whatever. far their best. Chubb is, Chubb is. He's legit. Um, this big, big news from this game outside of the Baker stinking category is Will Disley. Um, again, major injury coming off a solid start to the season he's done for the year it seems like with a torn achilles uh they haven't officially confirmed it yet but the way pete carroll's talking it is a torn achilles and this would probably take him out for the majority of next season as well if i'm uh, correct with my torn achilles uh recovery times who steps up with disley out um is it cheating to say tyler lockett because i think that is who steps up um i no, i wouldn't yeah. say it's cheating I and mean, he's yeah, owned I mean, like, but yeah lockett I mean, owners I mean, rejoice i mean you're just gonna see more targets go to lockett more more you know high value talking if you're trying to talk to me the guys that have wilson or or uh jacob hollister like yeah i don't i, I don't particularly care to start those guys no I, I wouldn't recommend starting luke wilson in any league unless it's a two tight end league which you shouldn't be even in those then, anyways. Yeah, even then you're pretty desperate. Two tight end leagues, you got to be desperate. It's just desperation or one tight end leagues. Two tight end yeah. leagues is just a different kind of hell. Oh, man. Packers are doing the uh, let's sit on the two-yard line and not score thing. Jerks. Uh, all right. So after the Seahawks-Browns, moving on to the most boring game of the week. Worse than Redskins-Dolphins, Saints and Jaguars. That was brutal to watch. And there's only one positive thing to come out of this, and that is Marshawn Lattimore. Yeah, I mean, Lattimore is, you know, reaffirming himself as one of the best corners in the league. Held DJ Chark, that's wide receiver on the DJ, wide receiver five on the DJ Chark, to seven, to three catches on seven targets of 43 yards. Held Evans to a donut last week, Amari Cooper, to five catches of 48 yards before that. So, um, severely downgraders against Marshawn Lattimore. Other than that, I don't have to add about this game. Fournette is just a volume monster. Um, Kamara will do what he does. Jared Cook yeah. still sucks. Don't don't start him. He still sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't great. Um, Latavius Murray looked okay. Uh, it's good to know that if Kamara's knee thing and ankle thing gets any worse and he has to sit out, Mur- Murray will be a decent volume guy. So not the worst. But Gardner Minshew was bad. Um, should get better later on. Better matchups without Marshawn Lattimore in the opposing secondary. Yeah, um, I, mean, I think the Saints defense is, is like actually pretty strong, so I can't really fault Minshew for that. No, not at all. Um, moving on here, Texans-Chiefs, one of the most anticipated games of the week. Not the biggest shootout we had, but it was interesting. Uh, Chiefs went up early, and then the defense just let Deshaun Watson do whatever the, whatever he wanted. Uh, Mahomes got hurt. Uh, Whitney Merciless came down on his ankle, um, and right after that, he did not look the same. Is there concern here for Mahomes? Um, is it because if he can't move, he can't really do you know Patrick Mahomes things? Is there any concern here that he needs to be downgraded to you know not be QB one for the rest of the season? 
No, I mean, I, I wouldn't really overthink it. Like, I just think if you have Mahomes, like, are you really going to downgrade him? Like, you don't have a better option anyway. So just play Mahomes. Um, he's going to do what he does. He'll find a way to adjust. Like, does he even need his legs to throw the ball? Like, I don't really get the point. So um, he, I think he's just trying to even the playing field out for everyone in the NFL. So he, he's a good guy. Yep. And I guess we talked about this last week, but I'm talking about it again. Um, DeAndre Hopkins. What the hell, man? Like, he's just not getting... I guess, high value targets. I didn't see Watson look at him once in the red zone in the three quarters that I watched. Uh, he had 12 targets, nine catches, 55 yards. Everything was underneath. All the uh, the air yards, the deep stuff went to Will, Will Fuller. Man, Hopkins is falling deep in the rankings right now. He's not playing very well. He's not getting the stats. It's time to sell him, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, it might be. I mean, it's one of those situations where, you know, he's still DeAndre Hopkins. So you're probably being going to be able to fetch a lot. People are going to look at the 12 targets, the nine catches and be like, oh, yeah, he's going to bounce back. And he might bounce. You can get something, you know, similar value to him. Uh, I wouldn't be against the sell move, although uh, it's it's always tough to, to you know, trade your, your number one wide receiver like that. Yeah, it's it's about a funny fair value, right? But, Who, who's like who's like a wide receiver that you could get from right now? Uh, right now, not not to stop spot, even though I totally am. I'd try to trade for Julio, but I don't you know if it'd work. Julio? All right, let's let's. Do you rather have Julio or drop? I I'd take Julio. Okay, would you rather have uh, Keenan Allen or DeAndre Hopkins? Ooh, I don't know. They're they're both uh, probably Hopkins. The Texans offense is moving way better right now. The Chargers right. offense looks like crap. All right, Odell or DeAndre Hopkins? Oh, Hopkins over Odell. Yeah, and Mike Evans. I'd take Evans just because you know Jameis is going to chuck it. All right, so you've got in your order. It's Evans. I already forgot who the first person I asked was. Julio. Julio. So you got Evans, Julio, Hopkins, then Odell. Yeah, I don't trust Baker enough to trade for Odell. Odell had a better game this week, but what about Allen? Oh God, yeah, that's wide receiver one right there. Yeah. I oh, mean, just just to update it quick, that fantasy matchup I was watching ended seventy six point nine two to seventy six point nine. Oh, that last kneel down almost carried him, almost lost him the game. So close. That's that's hurtful to hear about. And yet I'm delighted. <laughs> the the guy that lost by point zero two had did not set his lineup, and he had two players that were out in the starting lineup. All right, all right, that's I, that's no fault. sympathy. No yeah, sympathy. No sympathy. I I completely changed my tone. I don't get it. I got deserved yeah. to lose. No in sympathy. that heartbreaking fashion. Yep. Hilarious. Um. Damian Williams in this game, Texans Chiefs. Pretty hilarious. Two touches, 20 yards, and a touchdown. Um, he was the highest uh, highest running back scorer from that committee. But how do you legitimately start somebody that had one rushing attempt and one target? Yeah, um, I, I think the correct answer is you don't. So um, we'll talk about him later in our panic button segment. Spoiler alert, not really. You all should be panicking. This shouldn't be a surprise. Um, so it's not looking. Yep. And of course, Tyreek Hill came back and did Tyreek Hill things. Five catches, 80 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah. He's back in the elite tier of wide receiver. Asked. Um, I assume you I, would you rather have him or John Rob? Honestly, I'd take Hill. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um, moving on to what was actually a pretty pretty fun game to watch. Uh Redskins Dolphins. Um, the one player worth watching in this game was Terry McLaurin. Uh scary Terry for Spooktober came out four catches, 100 yards, two touchdowns, did exactly what everybody thought he would do against the Dolphins. Um, he's done this to every secondary except for the Patriots. He's he's must start now, right? Terry McLaurin. Yeah, I think he's safely within the wide receiver twos. And I think um, Keenum being out there actually does help his fantasy value. He's he's slightly more competent than uh, Colt McCoy and uh, Ohio State, Dwayne Haskins. So, um, I mean, I love Ford. I mean, he's not just like a – I don't think he's a fluke. I think that's pretty safe to say. Yeah. And on the other side of the ball, uh, Walton. We <laughs> mentioned him earlier. He Hell actually yeah. – he outgained Kenyon Drake, uh, six rushes, 32 yards, five catches, 43 yards. He got outtouched by Drake, 16 to 11, but again, outgained him. Are we going to a passing back committee here in Miami just because they need to check down every every pass, every play? Or what are we doing with these two? I mean, I think I think the idea of a Kenyon Drake trade is very agreeable now for the Dolphins. I think if they have Mal Walton waiting in the works, like you could get like what a fifth for Kenyon Drake. That's that's probably worth it. You're not going. He's not going to be part of your thing like that. So I think this is the best possible. This is the best possible timeline. Hopefully Drake gets traded to some team that needs a, a player like him, and Walton can outplay Kalen Blodge because that guy stinks at football. Yeah, that was bad. I remember the last, uh, what was it, in Bellage's rookie season right after he got drafted, it was like, yes, he's going to be the starter. No question. No. He's taking Drake's job. He's so bad. Brutal take. Uh, moving on, Vikings-Eagles. Um, Kirk Cousin is super elite now. 
Um, don't listen to anybody else. Kirk Cousins, super elite, 333 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, Stefan Diggs, rude, my week, destroyed me. Uh, 163 yards, three touchdowns, uh, seven catches. The Eagles secondary is really bad, and everybody should target them now, right? Yeah, without a doubt. They're horrible. They're really bad back. I mean, a lot of his injuries, I don't know when all these guys are get back from, but we talked about the Cowboys got him. Uh, even if, if Amari's out, I think start Gallup, he'll be pretty good. But um, yeah, Cousins back. He's elite again. He's worth the contract. Super so, elite. Uh, other side of the ball, um, you had a start a start sit question with Miles Sanders, and it worked out for you. Three catches, eighty six yards, and a touchdown. Still not getting any rushing attempts, but he broke a nice one for for a touchdown to help you out there. Yeah, I mean, I asked for upside. Uh, the question for those who don't know is, um, I was down to to someone who played. Well, who did they play already? Who did they already have? Well, you played Gordon, and I think oh, they yeah, may have had yeah. they they may have had the New England defense, something like that. I played Gordon, and they had. I mean, it's not important. You you um, needed you you need a big you need a big games. I played Gordon. They had uh, some shell, which is like nothing crazy, but like I also had Marlon Mack and T.Y. Hilton on on bye, so I was I was up against it. I said, hey, should I play Miles Sanders? Should I play Chase Edmonds? Should I play Latavius Murray? Honestly, also, Edmonds would have worked out too. Yeah, Edmonds would worked out too. Also, Hunter Henry, which also worked out, but I didn't even really consider him. Uh, we'll get into that later, but um, um, yeah, and uh, my guys at F6P, P told me to start Sanders for the upside and touch the ball six times, and he did what he did. So I, the lack of touches is is certainly concerning, but his upside is there. Hopefully, Doug Peters can see that. He most likely won't because he loves Jordan Howard. For, um, I don't blame. Hey, that's Howard. your guy, awesome. Jordan Howard. Yeah, I don't blame Howard. Awesome, but um, yeah, uh, a big Sanders. Fan. Yeah, he looks good. Um, moving on, this is actually the probably the biggest shootout most exciting game of the week uh except maybe tonight's but last second field goals are a week for those uh falcons cardinals as we talked about earlier matt ryan just throwing it all over the place 356 yards four touchdowns uh devonta freeman had his best game of the year 88 yards rushing uh two uh sorry three receptions 30 30 yards and two touchdowns uh julio had a nice bounce back after a couple of disappointing games eight catches 108 yards no touchdowns um Austin Hooper still doing Austin Hooper things. Tight end one this year. Um, but I think the story for me in this game is the Cardinals. The air raid offense is moving. Granted, it was against the Falcons secondary, but Kyler looked good. Um, they moved the ball and they got both their running backs involved to kind of help David Johnson rest with that back injury. It, is Kyler Murray moving into like top 10 QB ish area or, we, or is he pushing top five? Um, I think top five might be a little high. I mean, got uh, Mahomes, Watts, and Jackson is pretty like an unassailable top three. Like, you can't really argue with those. Yeah. Then Matt Ryan, his garbage time is up there, and Russell Wilson is up there. So, I would say those five are pretty clear set as my top five. I'm not, um, you know, uh, so so Murray is, I mean, he's certainly falling within that to 10 depending on the matchup. Uh, the air raid offense, like you said, it's working. And on top of that, Murray's been running the ball like a very decent amount um over his last three games he, this game or his last four games so over last game uh, 11 carries 32 yards the game before that 10 carries 93 yards a touchdown the game before that 27 and a touch the game before that 69 yards on eight carries so nice. uh yep you know you know how it goes nice and um you know that i mean obviously we all know rushing rushing numbers help boost a quarterback's you know value and he's been doing this without christian kirk who a lot of people might say oh christian kirk not that great doesn't really matter but Christian Kirk is a good player, man. I mean, Christian Kirk is a good player. The replacement out there is Keyshawn Johnson to Mary Burr. So um, I think getting Christian Kirk will help him back in the passing. I think they've also realized that, hey, look, Kyler needs to run, be helpful uh, to the offense. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be a good option going forward. Yep, for sure. Uh, moving on now, the, wow, what my second favorite defense in the league, uh, 49ers absolutely destroyed the Rams. Uh, Jared Goff looked like he was back seeing, you know, seeing Jeff Fisher in, in, his, in the headlights again. 78 yards, 1.1 QB rating. Unnecessary shots at Jeff Fisher. Everything at Jeff Fisher is completely necessary. That was just wasted years. Um, damn, but the 49ers defense, uh, matchup proof? I know we're talking about defenses now, but matchup proof? Um, I think so. I, I, I think, I mean, like, unless we're talking about, like, the Chiefs I mean, I or something. I wouldn't like play that. them against the Chiefs, but. That's what I'm saying. I think, yeah, I wouldn't, I would think the Rams are, are looking a little iffy. I think the Niners, uh, they have taken a little bit of advantage of weak competition. I think the Rams is a good matchup for them because their tackles and offensive line in general sucks, and they lost their left guard in the middle of the game. So, 
while I do think the Niner defense is outstanding, I think a little bit of fluff with some of the quarterbacks they've faced. Um, they had Winston week one when he was abominable. They had Dalton. They had uh, Baker, Mason Rudolph, and then they had Baker. And they had, like you said, Jeff Fisher version of Jared Goff. So, I mean, but that doesn't even matter because the next week they're getting Case Keenum. The week after that, they're getting Kyle Allen. Then they're getting Kyler Murray. So uh, you can pretty much start the defense. I wouldn't really argue against it. Um, they look good. Uh, they look good. The pass rush is strong. Nick Bosa is really good. They have a lot of talent on that line. Richard Sherman looks like a shutdown corner again. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good scenario. Yeah, but of course, the defense gets to rest a lot because the Niners' run game is really good. Uh, Coleman and Breda work really well together, and time of possession is really uh, really easy for these guys to control and get the defense a nice rest when they finally come back on. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're following that Shanahan print to a T, you know, run the ball like a defense you know they run the ball whatever the situation is which is kind of cool to see but um they don't ask garoppolo to do much um but uh i mean what so what, what are you going to do when the niners play the patriots in the super bowl how, who are you, i know you how much you love garoppolo so how who are you going for but what kind of question what it's yeah, it, right. that's garoppolo. like going are you are you gonna what no no so patriots he's obviously so, he's so much more handsome than brady though. yeah but rewind brady 20 years and we'll see okay um uh, no we'll, we'll give brady one more and then garoppolo can, garoppolo and brissett can then face off for the next 10 years that's fine wolfpack um no. moving on to actually what may have been a worse qb performance than Goff this week uh marcus mariota got benched against the broncos 63 yards two picks uh he almost got sacked on a play where the broncos rushed two um mm-hmm. absolutely brutal performance uh does he even start next week, realistically? I mean, obviously he will, but damn, Ryan yeah. Tannehill played way better. I, I think you have to start Mariota. I mean, I think they're, they're two and four, not that bad. Mariota played pretty well. He's had some good games. I don't really think move on from that, Clay. Um, he is. He was this game, though. Uh, like, absolutely. And I think we mentioned it at the start of the net. It was very likely that we see some Tannehill. I really didn't think he this early. Um, but uh, I don't know. They're, looking at their schedule, he's got the Chargers, who apparently suck. The Buccaneers, who aren't great both at home then he's got the panthers the chiefs so i mean i think he can hold down this job for more weeks and then if he gets smacked by kyle allen um maybe we'll see Tannehill against uh the chiefs which would be hilarious yeah i saw this comparison the other day it's just you know winston and Mariota go one and two and they're just the complete opposite of each other winston mm-hmm. will throw everything at the wind yeah. he'll you know toss it 80 times a game Mariota will choose to eat 50 sacks before he throws it more than 30 times it's so fun to watch like the polar opposites going one and yeah. two <clears throat> um daniel jeremiah he's like an nfl.com guy i don't know who he is he tweeted something that i thought was so true he tweeted Mariota missed too many layups and Jameis takes too many wild three <laughs> i was like yeah that, that yeah yeah that's a very that's a very good comparison i like that one um on the bronco side nothing out of the ordinary flacco was meh again um elite two game win streak let's go i mean the opponent scored zero points was flacco out there at at cornerback Flacco didn't throw a pick six, so he didn't throw negative points, which means, you know, <laughs> you got to give him, yeah, give him the W. Elite. Uh, moving on, Cowboys Jets. We touched on this one already. Um, Sam Darnold came back, played really well. Uh, 338 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Robbie Anderson finally had a breakout game with Darnold in there, 125 yards and a touchdown. Suddenly, the Jets offense doesn't look terrible because Sam Darnold is apparently super, super good. Or the yeah, Cowboys pretty, suck. One or the other. Pretty, su- pretty surprising, actually. I would I would lean towards that Arnold's good. Um, I actually watched this game because my friend is a Cowboys fan, and he was just apoplectic that, you know, <laughs> they lost to the Jets, which, you know, Cowboys fans, it's hilarious. Um, but uh, Darnold looked good. I mean, his, his pocket presence and movement in the pocket is actually pretty impressive if you actually watch it, uh, considering his O-line isn't great anyway. So, um, yeah, the Jets offense be good. Uh, Anderson, obviously, had the 92-yard touchdown. Crowder good in slot six for 98 Tamaris thomas has been reborn wearing 18 looks super strange i'll never get used to it um and then uh hopefully we get chris herndon next week because my i'm, I'm tired of starting oj howard hopefully we get <laughs> no you have to start oj howard one more time i absolutely not if they when, tell when me chris herndon is like good to go i'm cutting oj howard when a hamstring injury is named week to week he's not coming back after one week when your tight end is oj howard <laughs> <laughs> him. You just don't start him if you can. Just start Cameron Braid. At least he's going to get a red, red zone touches. I refuse. Okay, then. Me it. I'm just going to take the gamble. I don't care. All right. What, fine. Do, what do I have to lose? My team amazing outside of the tight end. All right. Is this our league? No, no it's not our league. In our league, uh, our league, I have. I do have it in that league. No, Richard has Howard because oh, we yeah, called we called that draft pick. That was the funniest oh, moment yeah. of the draft. I have Austin Hooper. What am I saying? I don't have to worry about tight end. Damn it. Meanwhile, I'm trudging along with Delaney Walker. Damn it. All right. All right, let's move on from that discussion. Uh, Sunday night game, Chargers, Steelers. Um, 
we talked a lot about Devlin Hodges last week on the show. Kind of made fun of him, which is unfounded now because he beat the Chargers. Um, the Chargers look no, I bad. Don't, I don't take it back. He, he didn't look good. He, I mean, he, he looked slinging it like. Hey, he, he he slung it once and it got picked off. All right, he won the game. <laughs> elite, elite. He won the game. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not I'm not here to give Devlin Hodge a ton of credit. No, for that. I'm win. not giving congratulations. Him credit, but... 15 for 20, 130, one touchdown, one interception, seven yards per attempt. Congratulations. Hey, he won his first NFL start. But yeah, that was uh, <laughs> the that was all James Conner and Benny Snell. Um, Conner had 41 rushing yards and a touchdown, 78 receiving yards and a touchdown. Then he got hurt. Uh, he hurt his quad. Not been a word on how long he's going to be out, but with the bye week, he should be back. Uh, Benny Snell came in, 17 rushes, 75 yards. Um, Juju had four targets, one catch. Oh, sorry, seven targets, one catch, four yards. Where do you put Juju now? What do you even do with him? You can't trade him at this point because nobody's taking him with Hodges and Mason Rudolph at the helm. Yeah, I, I definitely typed that wrong. It is one catch four, on four yards for seven. Uh, four, one catch on four targets for seven yards. So, oh, my bad. Uh, yeah, I confused you there. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe you can find someone who's willing to buy high on it. But at best, I think you're getting wide with two. Like, I don't even know, like, if I was a DJ Chark owner, if I'd trade straight up for Juju. Like, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't. Um, <sighs> yeah, honestly. Like, would you like... trade, like, you wouldn't trade Juju for, like, Terry McLaurin. No. Like, no. absolutely. Would you trade Juju no. for, like, DJ Moore? Like, I think that might be the best you can get. Yeah. Yeah, Which I mean, that, like, that one I would do. But it's, but it's like, you know, like, that's far from grace from somebody who was what? Juju was top 10 receivers in the draft, right? Yeah, he exactly. Was, like, that's not very... No. Um, Fall from grace there. Um, Charger side of the ball. Melvin Gordon, inefficient again. Eight carries, 18 yards. Uh, Austin Eckler, again, uh, just... That was pure backup numbers. Uh, five rushes, 14 yards, three catches, 14 yards. Uh, my trade is looking better and better. Uh, that wasn't on air last week when that happened, right? No, I don't think that. I think it was right after. So why don't you go ahead and brag? Yep. Brag about so trade. after our show ended last week, uh, I think like 30 seconds after we we, uh, we went off the air, I was offered a trade without prompting. Uh, somebody offered me Julio Jones for Austin Eckler, straight up one for one, no draft picks, no nothing. I have never hit the accept button harder. And I was yelled at much of the for for a long time by Kevin and then for the rest of the league group chat. So yay. Good trade. I'm I mean to be fair, I wasn't yelling at you out of anything except pure jealous. So <laughs> still uh, getting yelled at, which that's that's true. I mean the other thing was like you didn't immediately press accept and I was yelling at that. You're saying, Oh, maybe this is a trick. Maybe I have to look up if Julio is hurt. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah, that's then, that's you know, that's a solid strategy, making sure he's not hurt. No, you know you just you just Julio on IR for Austin Eckler do the trick. Best thing is I faced him this week. Um the guy I traded with, we we just faced off and I won by five. If we had not made the trade, oh, he would have beat me. Oh my god! Just so perfect. I'd quit. Absolutely league, perfect. I'd quit <laughs> you can't bounce back. <laughs> no. Um, other than that, biggest news: Hunter Henry comes back from his knee injury. Uh, eight catches, hundred yards, two touchdowns. After two one one point five games, Hunter Henry is the tight end seventeen. <laughs> Um, I mean, he's only owned in 65% of Yahoo leagues. So that 35% better be putting in a crap ton of, uh, of bids and money and whatever you need to do to get him. Because, uh, I mean, granted, I think Kevin, they had a, the Steelers had what a third string cornerback on him, third string safety. But... Yeah, it was like a third string safety like that. I, I mean, it was garbage time stuff, you know, that he's getting his stuff done. So you have to put a little bit of uh, a term for it. Asterisk? Uh, Grain of salt? Grain of salt. Take it with a grain of salt. Keenan Allen didn't have a good game, but um, I think Rivers had like 44 pass attempts, which probably isn't going to happen many times. But um, yeah, I mean, he's automatically top eight tight end, like without even thinking about it. Top yep. six, top seven. Easily. Yep. Uh, yeah, Hunter Henry, if he's available, get him. Anyways, uh, let's move on to our, our segments now. Um, let's start with the panic, because that's always fun. Uh, you had a little spoiler alert earlier. Why don't you move on and tell us about Damian Williams? Yeah, uh, everyone who before the season was like, Damian Williams is going to be fine. Don't worry. LaShawn McCoy does not matter. Don't worry about it. Wow, Damian bell cow. Wow, Andy Reid. Only his one running back. Wow. You're all liars. You're all wrong. Eat it. It's bad. He played 22 snaps to LaShawn McCoy's 29. Uh, 
had two touches, I think. Yep, two touches. It's it's very bad. Like I get it. Sure, he's coming off it. Whatever. It's not good. Um, bail on Damian. If you can get anything for Damian, I think there's a league I have Damian and Lashawn McCoy. I think I would trade them for anything because I don't even want to deal with the headache. I can't even figure out which. Uh, last week I started McCoy. He sucked. This week I started Damian. He sucked. It's terrible. So uh, just move them in. I mean, but if one of them gets hurt, they're, like they're gonna be so good. <laughs> the two that are left are gonna be so good. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like if I could trade them for, I don't know, not even someone who's like, if I could get like, yeah, if you want to trade me Joe Mixon for them, I think. Yeah, high bar there. <laughs> like if I could get like Phil, if I could get even my nemesis Carlos Hyde. Oh, I forgot to talk about Hyde in the, damn it, never mind. It's too, it's 26 too late carries, back. 100 and, what is it? 100, 26 carry, 22 carries, 116 yards and a touchdown. All right, that's it. He's good. All right. <laughs> he also yelled at the camera, they can't F and stop us. They can't F and stop us as for after his touchdown. I feel like he was yelling directly at you. I think so. I think he literally, I think you missed the part where he said, at Kevin M. Whoa, they can't <laughs> stop me. Yep, that's exactly what he said. All right, uh, I'm panicking on Sammy Watkins. Um, maybe a week too late, but it's straight panic time. Uh, injuries, ineffectiveness. We talked about it last week. Even when he did play, uh, he wasn't good other than that first week. Now he's hurt and Tyreek Hill is back. Um, Sammy Watkins is bordering on unplayable because you never know when he's actually going to do something. and. He's only going to do it when he's on your bench. So if you can sell him to anybody, <laughs> I would take it. Uh, you can try some Bills fans that might still like him. But otherwise, I don't really see you can get, that you can get much for a boomer bus wide receiver four. Yeah, Sammy Watkins. I mean, boy, oh boy, did we overreact to week one. Um, there, there's not much else to say. He disappointed for four straight weeks. Then Tyreek came Hill back. Tyreek Hill came back, and 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 Sammy's dealing with injury now, so he's basically back to being everywhere, everywhere. Like you know, he was drafted as wide receiver thirty something, and you know that's kind of been what he, that's kind of been what he is. So uh, not too surprised to tell you the truth. I mean, the reason we faded him before this inconsistency and in injuries, and and that's what he's been doing this year. So yep. Um, do you want to do a second? panic or do you just want to go to your uh you're moving up um i think i have a panic um but it's kind of a hot take i'm ooh, kind ooh. of those are fun we, we got to get in the super hot takes before richard comes back next week do it <laughs> before richard calms us down yep um i'm kind of about Derek henry uh, i don't really own him but i just think he the consistency is there but i think with the quarterback being as shaky at it as it is it's never a good sign and i feel like when something like this happens where the quarterback gets benched and then you know the the other guy comes in it's like a turning point like i just have a feeling that this is where it ends like he was super consistent up until this point 11 plus points in every single game uh either 70 yards or a touchdown you could bank on it but I think once you kind of make that switch, I think you're going to be the, the Mariota, Brian Tannehill thing. It makes me very, very, let's put it like that. Yep. I completely agree. Uh, completely, completely agree with that. It was, yeah, Titans offense is not moving anywhere. And if they're got not going, then Derrick Henry's, unless he does what he did at the end of last year and breaks off, you know, 90 yard runs every couple of games, not going to be super consistent with the points. Yep. Yeah. Hot I mean, a little bit of a hot take. It's not super hot. Like, it's but. not super hot because I've I've been a, a, a just like an adamant Derrick Henry non-believer. But Denver has been getting gouged on the ground on against the run, so it's it's pretty surprising that he wasn't really able to do anything. And then you know if you look at his snap percentages, he he rarely plays more than sixty percent of the snaps. He only did it once this season. So even though Deion Lewis is useless for fantasy reasons, Derrick Henry isn't on the field the majority like you know as much as you'd like to see out of your starting running back. Yep. So um, again, it was kind of like a like a or not a recent like a like a week one overreaction, like an anchoring thing. Like he had a seventy five yard touchdown. Other than that, he's just 80 yards and a touchdown every game. Absolutely nothing in passing. He's like not that in my eye. And I think the fact that the quarterback is now up in the air can't be good. So yeah, we're a little worried about it. Yep. And I guess for me, less of a hot take. We already talked about him. Uh, Jared Goff. I mean, Rams offense is not what it was last year. Um, he did have a couple of good games. Like he threw 517 yards against the against the Buccaneers, but that was a lot of garbage time when they lost 55 to 40. Um, the offensive line is not what it was last year. The Rams put a lot of money into other positions and left, you know, Goff on his own, <laughs> kind of behind a uh, an injured an injured and aging offensive line. Wasn't uh, you know, he's not the kind of quarterback he was last year. He's having trouble making reads, and he's thrown multiple interceptions and in, you know. Well, a couple of games this year, but yeah, not looking great. And if you drafted him as your QB1, I would look for a replacement. I don't think anybody's actually trading for Goff, but I'd look to replace him or start streaming. 
because he's going to be a little inconsistent, and he's got another matchup against the uh, the 49ers this year. So not 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 great. Yeah, it's not good. Um, the golf thing. It's oh, and Gurley's hurt. Gur- and Gurley's hurt apparently. Yeah, I was just he's like say, never playing I think, again. I think the Gurley, the threat of Gurley, really opened up a lot of things for that offense. And I think without Gurley being there, knowing that they don't really have to worry too much about him coming out the backfield and passing, and they don't have to dedicate maybe like the extra defender that they did last season to try to help off him. I think that's really really affecting golf and that whole offense. Yeah. Um. All right, let's go to moving up. Who are you looking to uh to grab or to to, I guess to trade for moving up in their value. Yeah, so my moving on up is pretty obvious. I mean, it's a guy who is Robbie Anderson. I mean, we all kind of thought the chance that Darnold comes back, he could, you know, get val- be valuable again. Uh, didn't really see it happening like this, but five catches, 125 yards, and touchdown, including a 92-yarder. Um, that was just, like, a beautiful – like, it wasn't like a broken play. It wasn't anything like that. It was just, you know, uh, pitch and catch exactly how you want to see it. Uh, Robbie Anderson is all of a sudden, you know, probably like a wide receiver three-ish, low-end wide receiver three, with only room for upside as Darnold, you know, actually, like, settles it. So – I like Robbie Aaron a lot. He's going to boom. He's going to bust, but he's definitely going to be valuable. Yep, I like that. Um, I'm going to try to help people with their tight end woes if they have OJ Howard. Uh, Ricky Stills Jones has played pretty well last last couple games. I know he's with the Browns. Um, Baker's not playing super well, but in two of their last three games, he's caught a touchdown. Um, he had 81 yards and a touchdown in week four. And now this most recent game here, week six, he had 47 yards and a touchdown. Um, it's a target that Baker's, I mean, he's a target that Baker's able to hit. Uh, he's going to play decent until Njoku comes back if he does this season. And honestly, you could do a worse at tight end than somebody that caught touchdowns in the two of the last three games. Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly. I guess he's playing, the yeah, like you said, the Njoku role. It's not a great role to have, but uh, the numbers speak for themselves. Tight end sucks. I mean, like you, you're either looking at picking up Ricky Seals Jones or like Darren Fells, I guess. It's not, it's not looking good out there, so. Um, we do what we can. I think, well, Darren Fells, the best part about him is if you add him and you decide to watch his games, so like, you know, you watch your fantasy guy, you get to hear the broadcasters talk about how oh, he used to time. play basketball. Every like, time. Did you know he used to play basketball? Like it's, it's like the oldest trope in the, like, oh, tight end used to play basketball. Like, all right, cool. It's not even that cool anymore. Although, actually, I guess his is different because he actually played professionally, like overseas. Yeah. yeah. So that was like a nice one. But also, it's not, I mean, it's, it's not the Jimmy every, Graham, Antonio Gates. Yeah. I mean, every thing. time they mention, oh, and there's those basketball seals coming in handy. Like, all right. That one, he didn't even use basketball. I want to see somebody flop one time and then be like, there are those basketball skills. Someone did it one time when they were like pushed by someone, but... um, Wouldn't be shocked. Wouldn't be shocked at all. All right. Um, Do you have a... uh... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, second move on on up. Oh, big yep. time. Kirk Cousin, quarterback <laughs> one, startable. Rest is, let's get it. No further discussion. Sick. No, I'm just kidding. Please don't. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> um, my other move on on up, I actually mentioned earlier I, that Tyler Lockett would be a, a, a beneficiary of um, Will Disley going down. But the other guy who probably more is DK Metcalf. Um, just like a big body guy, he already leaned with seven red zone targets. Um, and, you know, that is ahead of who had five red zone targets and but four touchdowns, four red zone touchdowns. So if you can get Metcalf doing the downfield stuff he does, and now he tacks on the role of being basically the number one red zone receiving option, that is very valuable. Yep, definitely agree with that one. And of course, you know, Russ is playing out of his mind right now. So that never hurts for sure. Um, my second moving up is going to be somebody that was absolutely destroyed this week. I'm going to go with Daniel Jones. Um, I mean, he got the Patriots defense as a cheat code. They destroyed Daniel Jones. Uh, Daniel Jones. He had three, three picks this week. Did not look good, but he's going to get Saquon back next week. He has a not spended Golden Tate. Sterling Shepard should theoretically be back from his concussion and what other, uh, whatever other various injuries he suffered over the last three days, I'm assuming. Um, but he's, I'm sure that Daniel Jones has learned something from that Patriots game. He's seen the best secondary in the league, and now he can move on to go and face the just, you know, he's got the Cardinals next week. So nice matchup for him uh, next week to come back. I'm assuming that the stats will get bumped up a bit again with a healthy receiving core and Saquon who he can just dump it off to and he can run 30 yards and claim those yards for himself. So Daniel Jones, if you need a QB streamer. Yeah, that's a, that's an int- I mean, for next week, for sure, streaming. I'm kind of still interested in him going forward. I tend to think with more options, um, teams aren't going to be able to focus as much on him and he might, you know, be able to use his legs a little bit more. But in general, I think just having more options would be helpful. He's throwing the ball at least 30 times every game. So that's a good thing. Uh, but He's going to uh, have to. The Giants defense is not good or the secondary is not good anyways. Yeah, they, He's, he's going to have to throw. Yep. And Darius Slayton actually doesn't look terrible. Decent defense. Yeah. 
I, sometimes I feel bad about making fun of these guys. Like, oh, who's Darius Slayton? Who is Auden Tate? You know, ha, ha, ha. Like, they're never going to amount to anything. And then I remember that yeah, that's just my personality. I'm not a good person. So I don't feel bad about it after that. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good summary. Uh, what can panic, I say? I know myself. I know, panic I know button, Kevin Well, Just a bad person. You should drop him. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've panicked so many players. Not even panicked. Just like, man, okay, you're not good. Cut them immediately. And then next week, they're like, oh, wait. I remember how to catch. And they're amazing again. Oh, man. Who did I do? That for last, last year I did that for and I was sick. I forgot who it was. Uh, I'm sure we can sort through the archives in week one of two, one or two. And figure that out. I think out. it was like Corlin Sutton. I like, mean, he uh, wasn't even good last year. This year yeah, he's picking it, was, it up, but yeah, like, but like last year, Demarius got hurt. Corlin Sutton, uh, everyone was like, oh yeah, he's gonna come and he's gonna beat Demarius. The first game, he had like two catches of 15 yards, and I was like, yeah. get this guy off my roster. And then he was serviceable. <laughs> uh, those are always the worst, but you learn. Anyways, no, I no, think we've no, uh, no. <laughs> we've hit the hour mark, guys. Um, Kevin, you have any final words for for week seven games to look forward to? Any uh. Words of wisdom, final advice that you, that can be taken as gospel, and that everybody should listen to 100. Um, percent Follow me on on fan, on at Kevin M Huo at Fantasy Six Pack dot net. I tweet out my rankings. Those that's basically just the gospel. Feel free to follow that. Um, don't ask me to start sit. It's all in there. Everything in there is going to be 100 percent right. Um, as far as games, I don't know. I haven't. Let's look at the schedule. NFL schedule week seven. All I know is that the Chiefs play the Broncos and. Uh, that's it. I don't think there's a lot of good games. What am I looking for? Pats, oh, Jets, Cowboys. Monday night. Oh, Raven Seahawks is actually interesting. You didn't even know the schedule um, for your own team? I don't know the schedule for my own team. Come on, man. Let me live. You didn't even know the Patriots brought back Ben Watson. What kind of fan are you? I'm a wrestling fan also, all right? It took up yeah. some time. Oh, also, uh, all this talk about McCaffrey as MVP, uh, kind of overblown. I'm going to whisper that because I think that's a hot take. <laughs> I mean, if he keeps carrying Kyle Allen to wins, I can see it, but... It, no, no, no. You can't, you can't give me both. You can't tell me Kyle Allen is doing really well as quarterback, but Christian McCaffrey carrying the win. This is like, okay, then he's clearly not doing that much. No, it's the same. Like you said, it's an Alex Smith thing. Alex Smith didn't win games. He just didn't lose them. He just had to hand the ball off or dump it off, as it were. Yeah, I mean, someone put together a highlight reel of Kyle Allen and Preston Rose and then get back. Because I feel like he does not throw anything like downfield. Uh, if I'm um, wrong, I'm wrong, but eh. I don't know. Buckingham well, we'll see if we're wrong. We'll see how Panthers much. are tougher to defend with Kyle Allen. Can get out of my face. We'll see how many angry tweets we get after that one. No one. I don't think any. I don't think anyone listened this far. It's my final thoughts, and it was just rambling. Yeah, that's fair. But I will not ramble at the risk of my own ego. Uh, I'm just gonna say I, I'm looking forward to the Rams and Falcons game because that's gonna end up 70 to 70. It's gonna be great. Now that you've said that, it's gonna end up 13 to 14. I don't see the Falcons you, secondary you. giving up fewer than 30 <laughs> points. Honestly, yeah, I can try. I can jinx it all I want. The Falcons are not giving up less than 30 points let's like fight the, me. let's see what the over under is what do you think it is 54 yeah sounds about right let's see am i good at protecting odds am i bill simmons or cousin sal no i can't find it where's that website so who is your MVP? uh russell probably it's gotta be russell i guess so. yeah i feel like they're not that good i feel like like uh their point differential against bad team is like not uh I, I think they and the niners have played both have played the Bengals, the brown and one other team that's like not good and the seahawks have beat them by a combined nine points and the niners have beat them by like a combined 60 something point and i think that matters yeah but at the end of the day it's a quarterback award it's going to be him or some or some other quarterback anyways yeah lamar jackson nope oh come on he's on pace for like four thousand yards passing a thousand five hundred rushing yeah i know but just to bother you, nope. All right, I got the game page up here. Can I it's find? actually 54. The oh, condensed is 54. I'm You're so good, at this. so good at this. All right, and with that, we know that Kevin's the best at this. Uh, time is up. So, everyone, thank you for listening to the Fantasy Edge. I'm Jonathan Chan, along with Kevin Huo. And again, Richard will be back next week. Uh, everybody, hope you had a successful week six. And hope your week seven goes just as well. Uh, unless you did bad. Thanks, everybody.